practice, the master of all things. I came to see a king, not a row of corpses. If you want rainbow, you have to deal with the rain. I'd always thought the world was a wish granting factory. Better a cautious commander, and not a rash one. Whatever is done well enough is done quickly enough. I have never been over concerned or obsessed with opinion polls or popularity polls. I think a leader who is, is a weak leader. To seek to keep the established constitution unchanged argues a good citizen and a good man. May it be my privilege to have the happiness of establishing the commonwealth on a firm and secure basis and thus enjoy the reward which I desire, but only if I may be called the author of the best possible government. Young men, listen to an old man to whom old men listened when he was young. Bear with me the hope when I die that the foundations which I have laid for its future government, will stand firm and stable. Wars, both civil and foreign, I undertook throughout the world, on sea and land, and when victorious I spared all citizens who sued for pardon. Behold them, conquerors of the world, the toga-clad race of Romans. Let us be satisfied if we can make people stop short at unkind words. Present a petition with as much hesitation as he would a penny to an elephant. I had a good mind to discontinue permanently the supply of grain to the city, reliance on which had discouraged Italian agriculture, but refrained because some politician would be bound one day to revive the dole as a means of ingratiating himself with the people. At the age of 19, on my own initiative and at my own expense, I raised an army by means of which I restored liberty to the Republic, which had been oppressed by the tyranny of a faction. To seek to keep the established constitution unchanged argues a good citizen and a good man. After this time I surpassed all others in authority, but I had no more power than the others who were also my colleagues in office. Those who slew my father I drove into exile, punishing their deed by due process of law, and afterwards when they waged war upon the Republic I twice defeated them in battle. Hasten slowly. Having attained my highest hopes, fathers of the Senate, what more have I to ask of the immortal gods than that I may retain this same unanimous approval of yours to the very end of my life? If I have played my part well, clap your hands, and dismiss me with applause from the stage. I rebuilt the Capitol and the Theater of Pompey, each work at enormous cost, without any inscription of my name. If we could survive without the wife, citizens of Rome, all of us would do without that nuisance, but nature has so decreed that we cannot manage comfortably with them, nor live in any way without them. We must plan for our lasting preservation rather than for our temporary pleasure. The tales of our exploits will survive as long as the human voice itself. When the dictatorship was offered to me, both in my presence and my absence, by the people and Senate, when Marcus Marcellus and Lucius Aruncius were consuls, I did not accept it. We write our names in the sand and then the waves roll in and wash them away. I rebuilt aqueducts in many places that had decayed with age, and I doubled the capacity of the Martian aqueduct by sending a new spring into its channel. Have I played the part well? Then applaud as I exit. I found Rome a city of bricks and left it a city of marble. By marrying too soon, Many individuals sacrifice their chance to struggle through this purgatory of solitude and search toward a greater sense of self-confidence. They glance at the world outside the family and with hardly a second thought grasp anxiously for a partner. In marriage they seek a substitute for the security of the family of origin and an escape from aloneness. What they do not realize is that moving so quickly from one family to another, 
they make it easy to transfer to the new marriage all their difficult experiences in the family of origin. At the age of 19, on my own initiative and at my own expense, I raised an army by means of which I restored liberty to the Republic, which had been oppressed by the tyranny of a faction, for which service the Senate, with complimentary resolutions, enrolled me in its order. I am a man of my word. If we could survive without the wife, citizens of Rome, all of us would do without that nuisance, but since nature has so decreed that we cannot manage comfortably with them, nor live in any way without them, we must plan for our lasting preservation rather than for our temporary pleasure. Did I play my role well? If so, then applause, because the comedy is finished. The greatest impediments to changes in our traditional roles seem to lie not in the visible world of conscious intent, but in the murky realm of the unconscious mind. If we could survive without the wife, citizens of Rome, all of us would do without that nuisance, but nature has so decreed that we cannot manage comfortably with them, nor live in any way without them, we must plan for our lasting preservation rather than for our temporary pleasure. I rebuilt the Capitol and the Theatre of Pompey, each work at enormous cost, without any inscription of my name. In his days shall the righteous flourish, and abundance of peace so long as the moon and earth, must not be explained as signifying such earthly peace as the world enjoyed under Caesar Augustus, as many believe, but peace with God, or spiritual peace. His contemporary spoke of him as the teenage executioner. Just as men must give up economic control when their wives share the responsibility for the family's financial well-being, women must give up exclusive parental control when their husbands assume more responsibility for child care. There was a young man in Rome that was very like Augustus Caesar. Augustus took knowledge of it and sent for the man, and asked him, Was your mother never at Rome? He answered, No sir, but my father was. When the dictatorship was offered to me, both in my presence and my absence, by the people and senate, when Marcus Marcellus and Lucius Arusius were consuls, I did not accept it. At the age of 19, on my own initiative and at my own expense, I raised an army by means of which I restored liberty to the republic, which had been oppressed by the tyranny of a faction. For which service the senate, with complimentary resolutions, enrolled me in its order. To seek to keep the established constitution unchanged argues a good citizen and a good man, 